Hey, everybody. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. It's Kelly. Hi. And yeah, is welcome it? to what is it? Media Chat 5, huh? Oh, the is it our fifth episode. episode? I think so, yeah. Fifth or sixth. I can't remember right I think now. That's about but. the time when videos start to go viral. So we should expect, you know, like a lot of fame. A huge following. Out. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty soon here. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> we have no. When are we going to get no... those YouTube checks, right? I guess they'll go <laughs> yeah. to the library. But... That's right. We have um, no guests today. It's just us. Um, but the theme today is summer reading, beach reading, poolside reading, porch reading, whatever it is that you, wherever it is that you read this summer, I guess. Um, the summer's going to be a little different than other summers. Yeah. Um, Probably more time to read, I would assume. Yeah, but perhaps we'll more time to read. Yeah. Um, Brad, are you going on a vacation this summer at all? Are you going away? That's a good question. Uh, no, I don't know. I mean, yeah. we didn't really have anything planned until September. Mm -hmm. So that's up in the air now. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm i assuming we'll try to get to Florida, but I'm not sure. So we hope. no, I guess would be the short answer. Yeah, no, I... We have a vacation. I go away <clears throat> with my very best friend every week who you might know from the KB and Travy show, the Travy and KB show. Um, right. We go away every August and we're still planning on it because it's an Airbnb in like the country. Sure. Um, so we're thinking even if, <coughs> excuse me, some of the places aren't open, we'll just hang out and watch movies and play games and drink wine. So that's Is it, um, the fun. same place you always go? No, West this Virginia? is a new place. It's a different part of West Virginia. We often go to West Virginia. We go to um, Bear, uh, Black Bear Resort, which is awesome. But um, yeah. yeah, this is a different place. So we'll see, but we're still planning on going. Um, it's the axis that my entire year revolves around. So I really hope we still get to go. Anyway. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, yeah. I mean, we're going to, we plan on going to that music festival. We have tickets. It hasn't been canceled yet, but I'm assuming it will be. What so. month is that? September. So, oh, that's the September. Oh. But stuff that's like after it has already been canceled. So yeah. I'm assuming that like yeah. it, it will be, but I feel like I September know. is a good time, but with crowds like that, like that would probably yeah. not going to be happening. Yeah, it's probably not going to be happening. That's yeah. disappointing. It, it really is. But I mean... What are you going to do? I guess right. we'll just like get a refund and go again next year or just yeah. like whatever. You could read that whole weekend now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So speaking of reading, so I would love to know, like, what do you look for in a good book, a good summer read? Like what kind of books do you like to read over the summer? Yeah, that's a, uh, that's a good question. I think to me, like a summer read would be something that's like fun, right? Like, yeah kind of uh I don't want to say like I don't know I mean just like easy to read fun like it's a short read maybe mm -hmm. like a day or two yeah and it's like nothing like heavy depressing nothing like too deep I guess not yeah. that there's anything wrong with reading that stuff in the summer but that when someone says summer read that's what I think it's like you sit out on the porch you might read the whole book like then during yeah. that day or something I agree. I think generally so, people don't read like really heavy books. Although I've never forgotten the story of uh, Lynn Manuel Miranda, who took the Hamilton tome, which is like this thick, on mm -hmm. vacation with him and read it in a hammock, and that is what spawned Hamilton the musical. Oh wow! So okay. Maybe we're doing it wrong. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I mean, I'm sure everybody has a different idea. It's yeah. just that when someone mentions that kind of stuff to me, like if they're looking for a beach read, yeah, summer read, like I feel like generally I mean, I'm you're not going to give them like the biography of like Che Guevara or something like that. Right. It's like three thousand pages. It seemed like I yeah. only got halfway through it, and it was interesting. But it's like I had to return it to the library after. Yeah, like, it's too. Yeah. Well, I I feel similarly <laughs> though. Mine is slightly skewed from that. I love reading scary thriller disturbing horror kind of books in the that's summer that's funny um because I, I have a book that's like in that same genre i wonder if yeah. we have the same one let's see oh where that'd be so interesting if we do. Yeah. so um i yeah i love reading those kind of books because i feel like Ooh, you can't oh Sorry. there's a cat hi this that's Timu. Timu. yeah hi Timu. it's a guest we do have a guest star Timu. yeah 
I wonder um, what her favorite summer reading yeah, is. Yeah, you need to ask like what she likes to read in the summer. Um, I love those kind of books though because I feel like nothing bad can happen when you're like poolside or on the beach or on your porch on like a beautiful day. Right. So, yeah. So um, I think the first two, which is by are by the same author that I'm going to recommend, are um, there's an author named Peter Heller and he wrote a book called The Dog Stars. Yeah. And yeah. Do you know it? I do. It's one of my most favorite books of all time, certainly a, a summer reading. It's a post-apocalyptic book, which I love. Um, so the mm-hmm. world has ended and it's kind of him and other, maybe a few, a handful of other people he runs into and how they survive. But it's beautiful and poetic and moving and lovely and a little mm-hmm. bit disturbing and scary. So, oh, okay. um, And he wrote another book just, I think, last year called The River which is not post-apocalyptic, but it's um, two guys um, on a river trip that goes horribly wrong. Um, oh, yes. I actually want to read that book. So oh, that's it was a good real one. good. I read that on my porch last year, and I did read it in just a few sittings. It was really good. Yeah. Huh. yeah. Okay, what's, what's what, one of yours? Uh, well, there's this book that I really like. It's called, um, it's in that, it's a horror genre, I suppose, which is books that I don't normally read, but it's called John Dies at the End. Oh, John, I don't know it. It's by David Wong. Okay. Um, it originally started as like he was doing this on like some sort of like horror fiction blog, and it's like he was writing chapters there. Okay. Um, my friend he came to me and he was like, "You have to read this book. It, it's just insane." So then, like Tara read it. He gave it yeah. to Tara, and Tara it like went around to all my friends. But oh wow, it's um, it's it's a really fast read and it's really funny too. Okay. And there's like horror, but the imagination of this guy is like the monsters and like the, the premise of the book is just like crazy. I don't know where he thought of it, but I mean, it's not like hard to understand or like confusing. It's just Mm -hmm. that like, I don't know where this came from. Okay. And um, so it's really cool. It's like these two guys, they figure out, they somehow become like these paranormal investigators just because they happen to like, take this drug that gives them special powers by mm-hmm. accident there's like mm-hmm. this drug going around that's making people crazy okay. in, in their small town and it leads to like all of these like crazy adventures and like other dimensions they can kind of like go to like other dimensions oh okay that and sounds very unique but the monsters in it are like the scary things are like so weird that okay. they made a movie version of it a couple years ago it was kind of uh low budget i think the only person in it that was like of any fame was paul giamatti you know oh i know him i love him he's good yeah and he was like, like, like a the bad good guy character actor yeah yeah and it's like they they did a pretty good job i thought but like okay. there's no way that you could like recreate these translate like, that well yeah yeah and and it's also really funny like the guy's just a really good writer and the relationship between the two guys are really funny okay and the other characters i'm gonna check it out john dies at the end okay i've never mm-hmm. heard of it, it and they like came out with like there was perfect. a couple other after it um books that came out um like sequels or yeah uh this uh the, i think the second one was called this town is full of spiders oh john. i wish it was like yeah. And then Joan dies at the end, and then like Margie dies. <laughs> yeah, <at the> end. <laughs> yeah. It's all. Of I don't want to. I don't want to give too much away. Yeah, but right. uh, I can't. Well, no, I don't want to give anything away. But yeah, yeah I feel like the review you've given, or the is a very the teaser you've given, is very good. Okay. Yeah. But um, yeah. So like, it's one of those books that I don't think you have to be like a horror person to like to enjoy. Read. Okay. Um. Some of mine, you really have to be into, like, scary, disturbing stuff. Okay. Which I, I mean, like, I think it helps with this one. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. I do feel like I need to recommend some, like, non-disturbing, scary things. I feel like I, I'm always recommending something where I have to, like, warn someone or yeah, give a caveat. Too. So that'll be next week. But um, what else do I want to recommend? Oh, uh, this one was that I read, I think, last summer. Uh, maybe it was the summer before it was it's called the cabin at the end of the world and mm-hmm. it was how do, oh I, i'm gonna read the review i wrote on goodreads just because i wrote it really well um and it captures okay, okay. so I, this is what i said um and this is my review on goodreads i said well heck i didn't say heck but 
Um, that was one of the best books I've ever read. Hands down, thrilling, chilling, thought provoking, terror filled, shocking, Whoa. oddly beautiful, philosophical, baffling. And I wept at the end. Bravo. Reading experiences like this come along so infrequently that I can count on one hand, my band-aided hand, the ones oh. that I've had. And it's been a long time since I'd had one. I did not anticipate having it with this book at all. I was just hoping for a fun, scary beach read. But boy, it is so much more than that. And I read it in just about one setting. I stayed up until four or five in the morning reading it. And it felt like wow. that feeling you had when you were young and you read a book till really late at night. and you couldn't and it was yeah it was so good post apocalyptic as well oh nice and You're very disturbing those, very disturbing okay. so take that with a grain so of salt. i think you're really good at this like review writing i think you should do that more because yeah, it's like I, I have sometimes i like if i really like something it's hard for me to describe it other than that was awesome it's or good. something like that that's what pops into my head yeah it is um hard. but at first, I just feel like I really have to like it. I struggle with those kind of things, so yeah. I appreciate that. I just oh, thought okay. I'd say, um, and okay. um, that sounds yeah. like an awesome book, and I think I want to read that like real soon. I think you should. I think you'd like it. It's yeah. It. I would love to have the experience of reading it again. Frankly, it mm -hmm. was so good. So yeah, it, I recommend it. That, that's kind of. I mean, in a way, that's kind of how John dies at the end is. So I mean, you okay. might enjoy that more I than think you think. I, will. Yeah. I mean, I don't think I would have never read it. Yeah. If I wasn't recommended. So right. that's it's why these things are important. That's exactly what we're doing here. We're providing a service. Yeah. Okay. So another book that you would like to, that you have read or enjoyed. All right. <laughs> this summer. is going. Yeah. And I feel like this, cause I did read it in like one day in the summer at like okay. my parents' house. Nice. Um, it's a nonfiction book. It's called the long way around. <gasps> it's uh, Ewan McGregor is in it is right. One of the authors and his buddy charlie borman oh i know um, they made a actor. documentary out of this too yeah 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 yeah. well i read the book before the documentary but okay. um it it kind of came out at the same time but my dad was into it and he mm -hmm. told me he was like i was bored at their house I forget why i was even there and he was like <laughs> you should check this book out so i read it because i'm a huge Hugh mcgregor fan he's awesome yeah. I do love him. um so they ride their motorcycles around the world him and this other dude this other yeah. actor guy and um but because it's like they're kind of entertainers it's like entertaining funny yeah um, weird stuff happens to them they meet a bunch of like crazy people like mm -hmm. getting into some of these countries was like really hard they had like sure. fried people they like hung out with ukrainian gangsters right like it's an uh, adventure packed story Yes. And their yeah. trip through Mongolia is really worth it because it's so desolate mm -hmm. and they meet so many interesting people mm -hmm. and they do actually do some like charity work with um, some organizations in some of the cities that they went to. So it was a pretty cool thing. Like, yeah, since he's pretty famous, you know, I guess he had some like crowds where he went, like some people mm -hmm. knew who he was, not the other guy. Unfortunately, I didn't know who he was either. He was yeah. Just, I don't remember the other guy. He's the other yeah. guy. Well, his name's Charlie Borman. Like he, uh, He's been in a few movies, but I think it's more of like a producer, director guy. I don't okay. know. But they're both like uh, British, kind of crazy British guys. Yeah. So it's. Um, hi again, everyone. This is part two. We had a unexpected technical difficulty um, that is completely my fault. So I'm sorry. Um, but Brad, you were just finishing up talking about Long Way Round. Yeah. So anyway, I don't know where Good I left luck. off really, but. <laughs> it's a good read like even if you're not really in the motorcycles or it's entertaining actor seeing them do having, something kind of crazy for them so yeah having watched the documentary i don't think you need to be into motorcycles i don't think you need to be into ewan mcgregor it's such yeah. a great story how we're all the same and we're all connected and yeah yeah it was a, it's a powerful story it is and it's just um it's a really the book is that like they each share a chapter so that's like each of them writing it which mm -hmm. is um pretty interesting a lot of like different perspectives and, yeah like it's kind of funny because they're best friends so like any weird thing that would happen they'd be just like well you know charlie's here so it's okay yeah like yeah. he would just like imagine telling his mother that he was doing like what he was doing uh-huh he'd be like it's okay mom charlie's here that was just always like something charlie's that made here. Me laugh. yeah but, it's a good one. It's a nice one to read in the summer, too. Yeah. Gotta throw the um, nonfiction in there. 
So let's see. I'll rec we can each recommend one more maybe. Um, oh, I have so many on my list. We should have like show notes so that we can include like all these other things. Sure, um, yeah. I will include one I read a few years, uh, years ago, probably 10 plus years ago, but mm -hmm. it has stayed with me. It's called One Second After. Okay. And it's by William Forstchen. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. I know. Okay. Do you know this yeah. one? I so, know the author. Oh, okay. I don't know if I know this one. I had never read him before. Maybe I should look for other books he's written. But this is another sort of post-apocalyptic book. Um, it's when, I, and I should have looked this up, what happens, but it's like a, there's a thing that can happen that can shut down all computers and anything. Oh, like Y2K or something? Yeah. And so that happens. And then what do people do? We don't have phones. We don't have yeah. your refrigerator, your car. I mean, everything is shut off. And so, um, I guess, and I did some research after cause I was terrified. Um, <laughs> and I guess it can technically, this, that can actually happen, but yeah. the chances are pregnant, but it was what thrilling. Caused it. Do you, does it um, it's, it's, there's a thing. It's like, a, it's a kind of bomb, I think. Oh yes. But, I know what you're talking about. It's like, yeah, EMP or something. yes, exactly. Yeah. And I don't remember what it is, but yes, it was a bomb. And so it like, blinks everything out and so yeah if you don't have a landline or I think even landlines went out I, I think so everything sure. was gone and so it was a fascinating book um and I after I read it I very much wanted to have like a bunker of food so it did affect me mm -hmm. <laughs> uh so that's another great one I'd recommend again disturbing and scary but super fun so all right what's your that's last title um shoot i had notes on it hold on finding our notes i'm gonna see about doing show notes somehow i think we can do that on youtube so keep keep uh stay tuned for that there might be more titles hold on sorry this is terrible but um <laughs> This is a clunky version. This is a clunky episode. I'm having a lot of technical difficulties here too, like with our internet today. So oh. that's why I'm, cause it's not coming up. Hold that's on. That's annoying. That's frustrating. Um, I can recommend one more while you're talking, while you're looking. Yeah, go ahead. Um, please. It's called Bittersweet and it's by Miranda Beverly Whitmore. Again, I read this years ago, but it was in the summer and I remember laying on the couch, like with the fan on and reading it. Oh, like, you know, really quickly. Um, it's kind of a gothic, suspenseful, not disturbing, not post-apocalyptic, not scary, but um, there's a rich family, there's a mansion, there's um, kind of an interloper, and it's a very fascinating read. It's not super popular, but um, there's another book called Bittersweet, which is about um, a woman's experience as a waitress and a server. It's not the same thing. So, oh, okay. Yeah, this one is an older, bittersweet, I think like maybe 10 years ago, eight years ago. Really oh, good. This is okay. killing me because it's like, hold Didn't on. Did find it? Yeah, I can't. I oh. had, it, the reason I'm trying to look for it is um, I'm not. I can uh, include it in the show notes. Okay. Oh, but, wait, hold um, on. Oh, I'm going to, just give me one more second, please. Okay. This is so unprofessional. I'll recommend one more while you're talking. And sure, I'm, well, do it. Currently reading the new Stephen King called If It Bleeds. Um, I love Stephen King, and um, it's a book of novellas. So there's three novellas, and I finished the first one, and it was so good. Yeah. And I guess the second one. I like his short stories, by the way. Yeah, they're good. I guess the second one is a kind of end of the world thing. So, you know, I think depending on how people feel, you might not want to read it right now, but I do. I like I'm a glutton for punishment, I guess. Um, all right, did you find it? I did. Oh, yay. The name Better of be the good, book. Brad. It is. It is a great book. Um, it's called Child Forty Four. Okay. Um, it I've is about. And the thing is, we um, when we were going to the beach with um, Tara's, uh, my I guess my brother in law technically and Tara's sister, um, we listened to this audio book. Like I just kind of picked it. They asked me to pick one. Okay. Because um, you're a librarian. Course. yeah it's about like it's um 1950s russia so it's like the soviet union time okay uh, and there's a so basically at that time like they wouldn't admit that there was crime ever okay uh -huh. so it was like 
so like anytime there was like a murderer they would just like not talk about it so there's like basically this like serial killer going around and killing children okay that's but they're great. like yeah well here's the thing like i mean it's well it's not post-apocalyptic but I mean, I guess he's just not killing children. He's killing other people. But it's like they're sweeping it under the rug. And there's this one guy who's like a policeman. He's like, don't do that. And he decides to do something about it. And it's sort of based on like a true story. I guess there was something like similar that happened in in the USSR around yeah. this time that they just swept under the rug. So it's him like tracking this guy down. Okay. And also having to deal with like the secret police not wanting him to. Okay. And the reason I think it's a really good book, it's a fast read, is, like, it talks a lot about, like, how, like, oppressive their system was and mm-hmm. how, like, you basically, if you talked about something or if you... You got into big trouble. Even they thought you talked about something, you would just disappear. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's about him and his wife trying to deal with this kind of thing. And, and it's also, like, a thriller, so there's a lot of, like, adventure and them, like, traveling around Russia, like, being chased by people, so... Okay. It's not really like a depressing murder book. I mean, that's sort of like what he's looking for. It's mm-hmm. not really there. It's more about. But did their, everyone else their... in the car like it as well? I guess the audio. Book? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's really okay. good. Um, there's also sequels after that, which I did read the other three, like a trilogy, and those yeah. are also like good. But you, this is a standalone read. It, it you don't really need. Yeah. To, uh, Some people really love series, or you know, like a series, so that might be really. Yeah, a, a and problem. um. So the cool thing about it is, I think, is just, like, it's kind of like, I don't even know if it's written by a Russian person. It's written by, like, a British guy. Okay. Um, I believe it's Tom Ford, um, which is, my notes aren't working, but I'm just That's going okay. with it. So, um, yeah, it's it's an adventure story, but there's also, like, a lot of, like, poignant information about yeah. how it feels to, like, live in Russia at that time. Uh-huh. And uh, I just thought it, I thought it was really good. That sounds like a book I would read in the summer for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not like super depressing, like a murder book. You know how some of those books can be. Sure. But um, yeah, I would recommend that one. Child 44. It was one I just like pulled off the shelf. And just happened upon. One libraries, yeah. And I was like, this sounds interesting. And Well, I think we have a very good handful or more of recommendations for summer reading. Um, I can't remember what we decided <laughs> to do for next week, our theme. But our theme next week, I thought, was I science tried to fiction find it. and oh, yeah, speculative and Sarah, fiction with Sarah. Uh, Sarah. Yes, science fiction, um, spec- speculative fiction um fantasy we're going to talk about some good titles movies and books um cool and sarah myocker who is our manager at our sharpsburg branch will be here as our guest star so tune in for that um thanks for dealing with all our technical difficulties and yeah see you next week